Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we'll be looking at the 25th problem from the CP31 sheet by TLA eliminators under the 1000 rated questions. Let's go, so I've moved on to my sheet over here, ticked off 1000 and we'll go to the 25th problem, Valerie against everyone. Let's read this. You are given an array B of length N, let's define another array A also of length N where AI is equal to 2 power BI. Now Valerie says that every two non-intersecting subarrays of A have different sums of elements, you want to determine if he is wrong. More formally, you need to determine if there exists four integers L1, R1, L2, R2, such that L1, R1 is like this, one less than equal to L1, less than equal to R1, less than L2, less than equal to R2, less than equal to N, and then sum from AL1 to AR1 is equal to sum from AL2 to AR2. If such four integers exist, you will prove Valerie wrong. Do they exist? Tell me yes or no. All right, very simple problem. Let us quickly see this. They start off by saying that there is a variable n that is given for which they'll give you an array b of size n. Every element will be b1, b2, b3, b4, so on till bn. Now every element represents what? Every element actually represents two power of that number. So basically this number is actually two power b1, two power b2, 2 power b3 and so on, 2 power bn. You can imagine that every number actually represents that power. So 2 power b1, 2 power b2, randomly you can say 2 power pi is what we are getting from every number bi. Great. Now what are they saying? Can you actually pick up two non-intersecting subarrays from this array, this new array, that is 2 power b1, 2 power b2, this array, such that their sums are equal. If you can, Printer yes, if you cannot, printer no. So let's say this is one portion of subarray that I pick up. Let's say this is the other portion of subarray that I pick up. These two subarrays don't overlap, don't intersect. So I can say, let's say this is one, let's say this is two. So let's say the sum from here is S1. Let's say the sum from here is S2. If S1 is equal to S2, I'll print a yes. Else, if no such two non-intersecting subarrays can be found, I'll print a no. This is the question. Let us see a test case and understand this. Let's say uh, the first case, you have 430120. So I'll write this down. 6430120. Okay. Now this numbers tra roughly translate to 2 power 4, which is actually 16. So I can write this directly. This is like 16. This is 2 power 3, which is 8. This is 2 power 0, which is 1. This is 2 power 1, this is 2. 2 power 2, this is 4. And 2 power 0, this is 1 again. Now this is the array that I'm looking for. Let's see, can I select two subarrays from this which have the same sum? Yes, I can. They have actually told you, if you choose L1 as one, R1 as one, and L2 as two and R2 as six, it works. So let's see, if L1 is one and R1 is one means this is this, because this is like one, two, three, four, five, six as indexes. So from one to one, only 16, that is one. And then the next one is from two to six, like this. Let's find the sum. So this actually gives the sum 16. This gives the sum 8 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 1, which is actually equivalent to 16 only. That means I get a 16 from here, I get a 16 from there. Do they match? Yes, they match. So my answer becomes yes, I was able to select two subarrays such that their sum was equal. Okay, I hope this makes sense. I hope the case is clear. Now they haven't given a lot of cases over here as samples. You can pause the video, maybe bring up a little more of your cases and try to analyze the problem. Pause over here, see if you come up with an idea. Great. Let us move on. Let us discuss the expected time complexity in this problem. So it has been told that one second is allowed for one test. Then every test has some test cases that is in hundred order. And then N is given that is thousand. And then every number that is BI is in 10 power nine. So let's first of all analyze this. One test allows 10 power eight. If I talk about operations I can perform for every test case, I'll write it like this. I'll say 10 power 8 upon 10 power 2, which is 10 power 6. So roughly 10 power 6 operations for every test case. Now n is given in 10 power 3 order. If you go back, yes, 10 power 3 order. So can you create solutions that look like O of n? Yes. A little larger? n square also is going to work fine? Yes. Even a little larger if you go, let's say, n cube. Oh, this is a problem. So solutions like these are not promoted, but if you go solutions like this, 
n n square or even if you are able to create something to a constant limit that is fine and this is expected time complexity discussion this is very good and very important because now this tells me if you create an n square solution i'm not saying if you actually end up doing that but if you do it's fine it's going to still work all right let's move on to our idea now right off the bat one thing has to be understood that if you think you can simulate this process as in actually the numbers are not given to you 2 power bi they are given you bi if you want to calculate 2 power bi can you do that look over here i'll remove one means conception over here bi is in 10 power 9 order if let's say bi value is 10 power 9 can you calculate 2 power of 10 power 9 no right that is a very very large number 2 power of 10 power 9 is not storable which means right off the bat you cannot work with this idea of actually creating an ARA and trying to figure out sums and something like that, not possible. So you need to come up with an approach where ARA doesn't come into picture or this array of actual conversion of numbers from 2 power bi doesn't even come into picture. Something that only translates my idea right from here. Something that helps me translate my idea right from here. Okay, I hope this part is clear. So for this part, what we'll do is we'll actually analyze a small argument. Argument according to me is talking in the BRA only. Okay, talking in the BRA. If the array P is all distinct, answer is surely no else yes this is my argument what does this roughly translate to if the numbers in array b are all unique all distinct then the answer is no and if that is not the case that means any number repeats any number repeats you know answer is yes we'll try to understand how Let's first see with the diagrammatic approach, what does this 2 power i actually means? Let's say I'll write it over here. Let's say there is a 2 power 0 number, 2 power 1 number, 2 power 2, 2 power 3, 2 power 4, 2 power 5, 2 power 6, so on till, let's say, 2 power k. Okay, let's like, like a larger limit that I've taken, maximum like 2 power k that you've drawn. Now, actually in the array b, if b's value is given, let's say, 6, what does that mean? 2 power 6 is there with you. So I'll do a marking over here. Let's say I say 2 power 6 is given, so I'll mark it off 1. Let's say the next number that is there in the array is 4. So 2 power 4 is given. Let's mark 1. It's basically marking occurrences. Then let's say the next number is 2. So this is 2 power 2. Then let's say 2 power 1. So this is 2 power 1. Now let's say again 2 power 2 is given. So I'll mark it off again. So this is 1. Now let's say 2 power 0 is given. So this is 1. And more and more. So I've just taken like six values in B. B array basically looks something like this. Six, then I have drawn uh, four, then I've drawn two, then I've drawn one, two, and zero. This is what I've done. Now answer according to me is yes. Why? Because in this array, it's very clear that values are not all distinct. Can you see two over here? Two is coming twice, or it's basically more than coming once. So what I can do very smartly in this case is, I can actually pick up an array or a segment which only captures this block that is single to nowhere is it written what is the size of the segment that you want to take right so i can be smart just take a one size sub array and let's take the other size sub array as this only are they both non-overlapping yes they are and are they actually right or will they give me the correct sum they will because this is also two part two this is also two part two very smart just picking up one one sized I hope this makes sense. So if the distinctness is not there in the array, so the answer is yes. And why? Because I'm being clever and I'm picking up only one size sub array and that tells me that I have created the same sum. But why did I argue that the answer is no if distinctness is there? Let's see. Let's say I would have done something like this. Let's say this one is not at this location. And let's say these are the numbers that are only given. So let's move this. Let's say the array looks like this. Six, four, two, one, and zero. Now you don't have distinctness. Every element is unique. Now let's say that you start creating two bucket. Let's say there is a bucket, which is sum one. Let's say this is another bucket that is sum two. 
you try to fill these two buckets with the numbers and you say that some segment goes to segment one, S1, some goes to S2 and they have to be equal. Now remember, every number that is given is unique. Hence, every number contributes to a singular bit that is turned on in that particular sum. I'll repeat. Let's say you pick up two power six and you pick up two power four, as in you pick up this segment, six and four. This basically means that in the sum S1, you have marked off the sixth position as one and the fourth position as one in its bitwise sign. S1 would look something like this. S1 would look one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. This is what it would look like. If I tell you that now you have to make the same sum for S2, if this is S1 in its binary format, if you have to make S2, then that means these bits, these two bits again have to be turned on. If this bit is turned on one and this is also one, only then do you think S1 and S2 will be same? Yes, that's correct. But tell me to turn on this bit and to turn on this bit, you again need a two power six and you need a two power four. But you had distinctness in the array. That means you did not have any other two power six after you used up this much for S1. Is there anything left that you can send to S2? No, because there is no two power six, no two power four left, which means these bits can never be turned on again in S2 creation. That is why I said that if you extend this idea, you can imagine because every bit is unique or every two power x I have who has only one occurrence with me, I can only turn on a unique combination for S1 and some different unique combination for S2. These two can never ever match since no bits have more than one occurrence. So how will you turn that same bit in both S1 and S2? It's not possible. If it's used up in S1, then it's not available for S2. If it's used up in S2, it's not available in S1, vice versa. So that is the main case why if every bit is unique, nothing gets repeated, you have to send your answer to a no case since S1 will never be able to S2, whatever you do. And this is the main idea. I hope this makes sense. This implements bitwise or bit manipulation into picture. So this part should be very, very clear that every S1 and S2 that you create basically means a permutation or combination, whatever you call that, turning on and off bits. And whichever bits get turned on in S1, never turn on in S2 again, since bits only have fun occurrence. Great. So taking this idea into picture, we can actually see we don't even need to do a dry run. If you look at the second case, that is why the second case had an answer no, because this array was all unique. Okay. And similarly in the first array, although they made an answer to confuse you where they actually considered this as one segment and this as other segment, since zero was clearly having more than one occurrence, you could have simply taken a array that is this and an array that is this, and that would have given you the right answer. So because you were never told how much length do you want for these two segments that you choose? It did not matter at all. You just wanted a yes, no answer. You have smartly deduced just by looking at this distinctness. Is the answer yes? Is the answer no? And once this part is clear, let's move on to the code part. It's going to be fairly easy to understand. What I'll simply do is I'll take the input of test case, take the input of n, and then I have a vector and take the input of that. Now, all I want to do is check uniqueness of this vector a. So I've created an unordered set you could have taken any other data structure you want. Set maintains unique values and I don't want a normal set. I can also go with an unordered set just to take some extra time complexity into picture. I'll insert every value in the set. Now if the set size is lesser than n, which means that there was some uniqueness, that is why elements got repeated. So I'll print a yes. Else if set size is actually equal to n, that means every element was unique. So I'll print a no. And this creates a time complexity of O of so what do we get over here? This is n order as expected. This is n order again, and this is pretty much constant because you have an unordered set. Remember, an unordered set takes O1 order for insertions on an amortized format. This is O of n roughly, which is equivalent to writing O of, uh, this was, I think, 1000. Yes, let's go back. Yeah, 1000. And what about space complexity? You have some space that comes from the array and also from the set. So you can roughly write that O of n again. 
Now in the expected time complexity discussion, we discuss something like n square also if possible. So that's fine. But the idea is, of course, if some boundary is up to a upper limit, it's not necessary that we create solutions like this. Even a better solution than that in this case was possible. So we created an O of n ordered solution. Okay, I hope this helps. And I think that is all that is there in this video. Just the clever idea of uniqueness comes into picture and bit comes into picture. I think this will also help uh, you analyze your concepts or revision regarding bit manipulation. Uniqueness that comes from creating binary numbers. And yep, that is all. So I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching.